Ed Hooper, an author and researcher, argues the OPV theory in a 1,000-page book called The River. Between 1957 and 1960, an experimental polio vaccine that was given by mouth, an oral polio vaccine, OPV, was given to roughly one million people in Central Africa, the same places where 28, 29 experimental vaccination trials took place in the countries that were then called the Belgian Congo and Rwanda, Burundi, which are now called the Democratic Republic of Congo, Rwanda and Burundi. The same places are the places where you see the first appearances of HIV-1 and AIDS. There is an extraordinary correlation between the two. That is the basis of the OPV theory. In the river, Hooper says that SIV-infected chimpanzees were used to make certain batches of the polio vaccine. The scientific community took notice. And so a whole theory developed in this book that um, at least one batch of virus was made in chimpanzee kidneys. And, and Hooper designated the batch, CHAT-111. So it was good journalism, it made a good story. I thought it was not impossible. Um, so uh, there were several of us in the scientific community who felt it should be debated. Hooper's book made international news. The Royal Society, a scientific organization in London, decided to debate it. They asked me, because I was a newly elected member and I was the HIV expert, and I was already troubled by this theory. I'd read the book. I said, yes, let's have a scientific discussion and let's have Hooper as a speaker. Now, some other scientists didn't like someone without a PhD, but that, that's just sort of snobbishness within science. Serious investigative journalists, why not let him come and wake us up and say, hey, do we know what we're talking about? In 2000, a large meeting of HIV AIDS research scientists was convened at the Royal Society. Samples of the oral polio vaccine had been tested in three different laboratories around the world. No chimpanzee tissue or SIV virus was found. So they looked back those 45 years and um, and again, using forensic DNA tests, they could say, was there any evidence that even 1% of the cultures that were used to make that combined uh, lot of virus could have been chimpanzee? And they said, no, it's 100% rhesus. They also looked for any evidence of SIV in those bats. Absolutely negative. By the end of that conference, I was pretty satisfied that it was disproved. Most of the scientists and the press at that Royal Society meeting considered the OPV theory to have been disproved. But Hooper continued his investigation. During the next several years, he says he gathered evidence that different batches of the vaccine were made in different places. The SIV-infected batch, Hooper claims, was made and dispensed locally in Africa. The samples that they tested were samples that came from the American labs. What they would need to test, it's now completely clear, would be vaccine that was made in Africa in chimp cells. We interviewed some of the people who worked at the chimpanzee camp and some of the people who worked at the medical laboratory. And the version of events that we got was extremely different from that which had been given to me by the American and Belgian vaccinators. Every step of the process was described to me by these African witnesses. What they were actually doing was opening up the chimpanzees while they were still alive, taking out organs and taking out blood, putting those into jars and getting them back to the laboratory as quickly as they possibly could. We then discovered that the organs had been used to make tissue culture in the laboratory and they were growing the polio vaccines that they received from America and from Belgium 
in these tissue cultures. Hooper says the witnesses also remember one of the scientists working late in a private laboratory. And they recalled his working there after hours after they'd left with the vaccine. And then, a few days later, he would come out with large bottles of the vaccine, which they then divided up into smaller vials and labeled these vials polio vaccine. So they've got a very clear memory. And that actually, one of the two technicians we spoke to had taken those same vials across the river to the military camp and had used them to vaccinate the soldiers and the soldiers' families and children by mouth with the vaccine. So we had the entire process taking place witnessed by African witnesses. Furthermore, um, I then started re-interviewing people in Belgium or interviewing new people in Belgium, and I have three highly significant corroborations of these details from senior doctors in Belgium as well, plus one in America. One of the defences which is used against this theory, people say, yeah, but the whites were vaccinated with this as well. Well, actually not. In most cases, in the Belgian Congo, the whites were actually given a different vaccine. They were given the injected vaccine from America. They were given a vaccine that was entirely safe. But the experimental vaccine was given by mouth, this oral polio vaccine, to the African community. However, aside from the witness testimony, Hooper has no tangible evidence that the experimental vaccine had ever actually existed. Nobody has ever found any of this vaccine. I suspect that some may well still exist in labs in Belgium and America. Nobody is releasing it from their freezers. So it's impossible to test the theory in that way. But certainly they have not disproved it. They haven't tested the right vaccine. We've moved on. It, it's not interesting to us anymore. But I think from the proponents of the OPV hypothesis, we've covered up. From our point of view, that's, that's not tenable anymore. You get on to the next thing. AIDS is too important. So what most scientists tend to do is to be expert in their particular field, and maybe a little bit of neighboring fields. But for all other fields, they will take the word of someone they respect. So if you have someone who is known to be an eminent retrovirologist, such as Robin Weiss, a lot of scientists will say, well, if Robin Weiss says this is untrue, then that's good enough for me. I think it's untrue too. The Westinghouse High School students in our project wondered if some elements of all three theories, natural transfer, serial passage, an oral polio vaccine could be correct. These are all possible situations. They could all be right, one or two of them could be right, and they all could be wrong, and it could be something else. Until we have actually proven that, we need to at least get all the angles we can so we can make a good uh, decision on what's really going on. One of the students said, why can't all three be correct? Could all three be correct? A smart I student. Uh, if he or she wants a, a summer intern in my lab, I'll take them on. I don't think the OPV holds up myself. Um, but uh, suppose I was wrong about the timing and uh, everything else, why I don't think it holds up. Uh, could that have been one route and another route? Well, yes, because there have been three introductions of HIV-1. They have been probably eight or more introductions of HIV-2. Uh, so I, I'm quite happy with multiple routes. Um, I don't think the cut hunter theory is a theory to be disputed. I think it's one of many routes. Uh, I personally think that, that, um, uh, that injecting equipment could have been uh, an important factor um, in helping it to adapt. I'm not saying it wouldn't have happened if there were no such things as syringes or needles. Um, but I, I, I don't, I suspect myself that it wasn't sexually transmitted from the start. 